Hello everybody, Dennis Evers, Godfather Prepper, and today I am going to build a rocket stove. been researching them for uh, about a year now, and uh, today's the day. I have a little time, and I scrounge this piece of pipe. Steel pipe, four and a half inch OD. Um, we'll find out if it's the right diameter. Some people like them uh, smaller, other people like them bigger. I think uh, this, for my application, is hopefully going to be just right. Now the first thing I'm going to do is mark it 16 inches down from the top, right here, and that will be the length of our chimney. We will cut back, and that will be our combustion chamber. Is if you're going to cut it by hand, you need to take a mark and make a 45 degree angle, which is not hard, and uh, make that 45 what we're going to do is cut it at 45 and then we're going to spin it 90 degrees so we'll have our combustion chamber and our fuel chamber built in now there's a couple ways of doing it you can use a uh, slitting saw or you can use a gas torch or a plasma torch which this is uh, or a saw band saw and uh, in this case, I'm going to use a bandsaw. I think it'll be quicker. Okay, so we've got our 45 cut. I ended up having to uh, start it with a chop saw, a, wood, a metal chop saw, and ended up doing it with a torch. So I got a little bit of a gap. But that's what we're going to do. We're just going to simply take this. That's 16 inches from here to here and 12 inches from here to here. Then we're going to spin it on the side, put it together, weld it, and that will give us our fuel chamber and combustion chamber. Okay, here are our tack welds. Just uh, to hold it together, I did it with a wire feeder, my Maxxis Pro 180, which I absolutely love. And then uh, I'm going to go in with my Miller arc welder and stick Fill it with a uh, 7024, I think, a uh, big wide granny rod, which puts down a nice wide bead, very simple to weld with. Okay, there it is, welded up. Put a nice wide bead down to fill the gap. I need to dress it. And, you know, one thing I've noticed about these uh, stoves, rocket stoves, is uh, people always use them on the ground. It's like uh, legs haven't been invented. So we're going to go ahead and add some legs to ours so it's uh, at a comfortable height. We're also going to put a flat pan on it so we can heat uh, tortillas or make pancakes or eggs. Uh, and also that will be removable so we can use a regular frying pan or boil water. So it's going to be pretty versatile. Okay, there it is. It's all uh, dressed out. So uh, let's add some legs to this puppy as well as a, uh, we need to put a chamber divider in there so the cool air can go in the bottom and the fuel can go in the top. So that'll be next along with the legs and a three part uh, holder on the top, a three way holder. I don't want to go four in case you're just a little off. If you go three, it'll always be level. Okay, now, here is our divider that goes in here. And this is what makes these things so effective. Now, not everybody uses these, but I like the concept. And what it is, it allows the air to go in the bottom. You put your little twigs in the top, and it burns and just pulls that air from the bottom. And that's why they're so efficient. So we're going to add one. Not Like I said, not everybody does, but uh, I like the concept. If you, this does not have to be airtight, watertight. It just has to be in there. Uh, but you know what? You might, and also I actually have it hanging out two inches. You need to flush it right here. Stop it right there so the whole combustion chamber. And I actually made mine a little bit longer so I can put a little bit longer wood on it. So we're going to tack that in there and then we're going to work on the legs. 
Okay, here it is with the divider. Uh, again, this thing is just uh, basically keeping the wood from going down. It allows the air to go in the bottom. And uh, if it really gets ripped in the air, I'm sure we'll go in through here with the wood as well. But uh, I uh, used a level, and uh, we got a. Again, this just needs to be tacked in there. If you want to put it in before you join them, you can do that as well. But uh, it's not going to go anywhere. We got a few tacks inside. Okay, here's what I'm thinking for the legs. I've got some old sucker rod. This is from the well or the oil fields, and so is this. This is old sucker rod. And I'm going to put a bend in these, put these to the rear. And then I'm going to put a single leg down in the front to make it as uh, hopefully pretty stable. So that's, these are 24 inches and that will get it about 36 inches off the ground. Okay, we've got our rear legs on. As you can see, the table's good and level. So we're just trying to figure out how, to, uh, how long to make our front leg. So there we have it. Whatever that length of that piece of wood is. We'll be okay, now here it is with the legs on and uh, I'm going to add some washers to the bottom if you'll notice. So if you want to use it out on the lawn or whatever it doesn't uh, sink in. So you can put pads on, washers, whatever. But uh, I'm going to add those to it and we are almost done. Here's a quick weld on the washers. Half weld is fine if you put enough uh, material down. They won't be going anywhere. Okay, now we don't want the uh, the pot holder to be flush with the top, obviously, because that would plug it up. So we need to bring it up an inch, so that's what this is for. We just take a piece of inch material, it can even be wood, and just clamp it on there. It elevates it, then you do your weld, and uh, you're up an inch, and it's level. Now we're almost done, but I wanted to add one little safety feature. And I need to caution you, this thing is tippable, don't get me wrong, this thing will tip. So it's not like you want to have kids playing around it. But I wanted, you know, if you had a big old heavy pan on there, I want to put a little stop on the corner, right here, just like that, on all three, so it will uh, keep, keep it from going off, whatever, uh, whether it's your... This is going to be for cooking and flour tortillas, pancakes, and uh, then we take it off and we have ourselves a burner. So just three more welds and well, we're there it is. Done. We're going to put a coat of paint on it, barbecue paint, clean it up, put some paint on it, and uh, give it a tryout. And. Uh, Dutch oven or frying pan, you can see obviously that it'll handle a large pan. This is uh, 13 inches across, so it'll go 14 inches as far as a pan goes. Plus, you can put a pan on top of this or directly on it. Got a lot of options. So, uh, happy with the way it turned out. Took about uh, three hours. And that was just with all of the uh, engineering on the fly. Made a couple of small mistakes that I had to break a couple welds and go in and re-weld them. But uh, other than that, I'm real happy with it. I think it's going to be a great little rocket stove. So we're going to clean it up and fire it up and show you what it does. Okay, now what I have here is a uh, big old 13-inch steel slug. It's a cutout from a uh, tank company. They actually throw these away. When they make tanks, this is what the pipe goes in, and this is just a cutout. And this is a little uh, piece of 3 8 uh, solid uh, rod. And here is a trampoline spring. We are going to make ourselves a uh, grill and cooking surface for this uh, new rocket spring. Hey, there we go. Just welded the... Uh, Put a little bend in that thing, welded it on, and then welded the spring on, tacked the spring on. It'll probably still get hot, but not hot enough to burn you. 
or leave a, a spring mark on you in the form of a brand. As far as this goes, I'm just going to clean it up, wash it really, really good, and then put some uh, uh, spray. I'm going to temper it, or not temper it, but season it, uh, and see what happens. There you have it. A little under four hours from uh, start to finish, cleaning and painting as well. And uh, let's take it out and try it. Okay, here we are in the old lighthouse patio actually. Over there is a uh, big old stainless barbecue that I built. Works off gas. And there's our smoker, which I uh, haven't used this year, which is pretty sad. But uh, this will be a nice addition when I want to just take a few sticks and make some tortillas or cook some beans. Next project's going to be a solar cooker. So, uh, I'll keep you posted on that. We'll let this get warmed up and uh, we'll see how it works. Kind of a windy day, but uh, it's, it's, it's working fine. It's actually working great. I'm going to make a uh, quesadilla here, as Napoleon Dynamite would say. Now, I had to put a lid on it because it's too windy out here. But no different than you would a uh, frying pan. And it is looking good. Well, the quesadilla turned out pretty doggone good. I was forced to eat it because I hate to waste food. I thought I'd try some eggs and see how they turned That's out. That's a good picture of uh, what it looks like. You can see those flames just roaring in and up the chimney. Just uh, trying to dial in the regulation on the heat, but boy, if you put in enough fuel, you could. I could put a uh, big Dutch oven on that and just go to town cooking with it. Uh, did take the uh, big flat pan with a spring handle off, and the spring handle was actually cool. Uh, it wasn't even warm to the touch, so that concept worked. You can see the flame there. I want my eggs over uh, well, and that's what I got. This thing is working like a champ. And uh, use just a tiny bit of wood. I mean, just an amazingly, just a tiny amount for what I've done. So I'm extremely happy with it. I think it's going to be a great addition to our uh, regular... Uh, cooking appliances as well as a good device for prepping. Till next time, thanks for watching and God bless.